Hello and welcome to uh, JewishTV.media. This is uh, the third lesson in our series on joy. You know, one of the greatest impediments to joy is what we call in Hebrew, especially in Hasidic terminology, Yeshut. Yeshut roughly translates in English as ego. By Yeshut, we're not talking about um, arrogance, we're not talking about gava. In Hebrew, the Baal gava, the arrogant person is the person who's still with himself. He's all-knowing, he's all-capable, he knows everything, he can do everything, he's smart than everyone else. That's Gava. Yeshut is not like that. Yeshut is not that you feel yourself to be great. Yeshut sometimes is that you actually feel yourself to be small. But Yeshut is the preoccupation with yourself. You overthink yourself. You're thinking about yourself altogether too much. In order to be joyful, you have to lose yourself. In Hebrew, we call this, in the terminology, we call this bitl. Bitl means loss of self. It's the opposite of yeshus, which means preoccupation with self. You know, we talk about, or the American Constitution talks about, the pursuit of happiness. That you can chase happiness. You can't chase happiness. What you can do is, you can lose yourself. And in the process of losing yourself, you'll find happiness. Before we came to Australia, the Rebavich Rebbe gave us a talk. He spoke about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, a very famous Talmudic scholar, Talmudic leader, who re-established Judaism after the destruction of the Temple. Now, think to yourself. The Temple was the center of Jewish life. The Temple was destroyed. To re-establish the religion in the absence of the temple was some great feat. And the Rebbe told us, as we were about to embark upon our mission over here in Australia, upon our shlichut of here in Australia, to learn from Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. What was it to learn from him? The Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, before he died, he said, Ein yedeya ve'ezer derech melichin isi. I don't know in which direction I'm going to go. I don't know whether I'm going to go to heaven, and I don't know whether I'm going to go to hell. I think about this. How could a man, with all humility, really think that he's going to go to hell after re-establishing Judaism? You know how the Rebbe explained Rebbe explained, he said, that Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai throughout his life was so involved in his mission that he didn't have any time to think about whether he was doing his mission perfectly or not perfectly, whether he was passing his own standards or he was not passing his standards. He was so involved in the doing that the self, in fact, ceased to exist. This is what we mean when we say bitu. You have to stop thinking about yourself. And you have to start thinking about the mission. You know, those of you who are familiar with a little bit of psychology will have heard about the uh, famous Jewish thinker, Abraham Maslow, who came up with the pyramid of needs. It starts off at the bottom, when a person, at the most basic level, needs food, he needs clothing, his ability to be able to procreate. When he has that, the next stage is he wants to have safety and security. When he, the next stage is up on the pyramid, he wants to have friendship and social acceptance. Next stage is he wants to have respect. When he has all of that, then the pinnacle of the pyramid is self-actualization. He finds himself. 
He wants to be able to discover who he really is. He wants to find himself. There was another very great Jew, a psychiatrist. His name was Viktor Frankl. Father should ever had a lot of good things to say about Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl took exception to Abraham Maslow and he said, you know, the pinnacle of that pyramid is not self-actualization, is not finding yourself. You know what the pinnacle is? It's self-transcendence. Losing yourself. Losing yourself in something which is bigger than you, in a mission which is greater than you. Yet it's not you who's important. It's the mission that's important. When a person loses himself to his mission, he experiences a joy like no other. In modern positive psychology, this is called flow. A person, so to speak, loses himself and goes with the flow of his mission. There's another very famous uh, positive psychologist. Her name is Ellen Langer. And she said that uh, if people would stop self-evaluating, they'd live a better life. She said like this. She said that um, people often wonder about a life after death. If it stopped self-evaluating, stopped thinking about themselves, they could actually experience life before them. Until next time, the Heber Simcha, be joyful. Jewish TV dot media.